Hello everyone, and welcome back to our series on algorithms. In the previous video, we discussed the single source shortest paths problem and how it can be solved using Dijkstra's algorithm and Bellman Ford. In this video, we will extend this problem to finding all shortest paths between every pair of vertices in what's known as the all pairs shortest paths problem. If you enjoyed this lecture, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. With that, let's begin. One approach to this problem will be to employ dynamic programming and optimize over the paths that minimize the total weight by considering whether or not any given path should pass through each vertex. For example, consider the following algorithm. Initialize two matrices of size n by n. Denote the first one as d and let element dij be given by wij if ij is an edge, and if ij is not an edge, then have this value simply be infinity. Also, we let wii simply equal 0. In other words, d is effectively the adjacency matrix for the given graph. Let the second matrix be P, and let every element Pij be a list which contains i, j if ij is an edge, a list which simply contains i if i equals j, or the empty list otherwise. Next, iterating over each vertex i, iterate over each pair of vertices j, k, and check if djk is greater than dji plus dik. If this condition is satisfied, update djk to be dji plus dik, and then set pjk to be the concatenation of pji and pik, excluding the extra i. When this algorithm terminates, pij will contain the shortest path for pair i, j, and dij will contain the corresponding minimum distance. This routine is known as the floyd warshall algorithm, and is particularly powerful for solving the all-pairs shortest paths problem when our graph has a lot of edges, in other words, when it's dense. Let's prove the correctness of this algorithm via a proof by induction. Since the paths constructed always have the same total weight as the values in the distance matrix, we will assume that the correctness of D will imply the correctness of P. In particular, we will prove the correctness of D by proving the exhaustiveness of the optimization condition djk equals min of djk comma dji plus dik at iteration i. It should be noted that each iteration corresponds to finding the shortest path possible using the first i vertices listed. For our base case, we simply consider the case where no intermediate vertices are inserted. In this case, there is only a path between a pair of vertices with no intermediates if there is a direct edge between them. Hence, the base case is trivially correct. Moving on to the induction step, since the distances computed from iteration i use only the first i vertices as intermediate vertices, to compute the lowest distance for the first i plus 1 vertices, we simply need to check all possible minimal paths between vertices that contain vertex i plus 1 to see if there is a path that has lower weight. Hence, since adding vertex i plus 1 to a given path is the only way to lower the weight of a path, we have that this optimization statement is exhaustive. Therefore, by induction, this algorithm must hold. Looking at the time complexity, we can see that for each vertex, we have to iterate over all possible pairs of vertices. In other words, the algorithm runs at O of n cubed time. Since this complexity is independent of m, the number of edges, we can use this algorithm for graphs with a large number of edges without introducing any additional overhead. However, this also means that the algorithm is somewhat inefficient when the graph is sparse, meaning that there are relatively few edges. Is it possible to do any better in such a situation? Well, another approach you might think of, perhaps the more obvious one, would be to simply take Dijkstra's algorithm or Bellman Ford, both of which are capable of finding the shortest paths from a given vertex to every other vertex, and then just applying this iteratively to every single vertex. Consider Dijkstra's algorithm first. If there are no negatively edges, then this approach works perfectly fine, in which case we can compute the shortest paths in O of mn plus n squared log n time. If there are negative edges, we would instead need to apply Bellman forward for each vertex. However, the complexity of this process would then scale as O of mn squared, meaning that for a dense graph, the complexity becomes O of n to the fourth, which is really quite inefficient. So let's step back for a second. Is there some way that we can modify the graph itself to allow us to iteratively apply Dijkstra's algorithm even if there are negative edges present? Well, as it turns out, the answer is actually yes. In particular, we could define some potential function phi, which maps vertices to real numbers. In particular, we could try to compute a modified edge weight w prime of uv, which is given by the old weight plus phi u minus phi v. You may be wondering why we would choose this difference to be our offset rather than just a single term. Well, if you add up the weights along a path p equals v0, v1, all the way to vk, we have that the sum telescopes. 
giving us that the new weight of the path is equal to the old weight of the path plus phi of v0 minus phi of vk, meaning that we can simply add phi vk minus phi v0 to the modified weight to obtain the true weight of the shortest path. If we can find some function phi such that w prime is non-negative for all edges, we could then apply the iterative Dijkstra algorithm described previously. Naturally, the follow-up question is how we would even define such a function. Well, consider the following construction. If we take our original graph G and add an additional vertex S with zero-way edges connecting S to every vertex, we then have that the minimum path weight from S to U plus WUV is greater than or equal to the minimum path weight from S to V, since the path S to U to V is a subset of all paths from S to V. If we define phi of u to be the minimum path weight from s to u, we therefore have that phi of u plus w of u v is greater than or equal to phi of v. Rearranging this then gives us that w of u v plus phi of u minus phi of v is greater than or equal to zero. Hence, this definition of phi satisfies the condition that w prime is greater than or equal to zero. Altogether, we therefore have the following routine, known as Johnson's algorithm. For a given graph G, add a vertex S and connect it to every other vertex via zero-weight edges. Compute phi U by finding the weight of the single source shortest path S to U via Bellman Ford. If we encounter any negative cycles, terminate the algorithm immediately and report the existence of a negative cycle. Otherwise, compute the single source shortest paths for every vertex in the graph using the modified weight function W prime U V equals W U V plus phi U minus phi V. For the w prime values computed for each path, add phi v minus phi u to recover the actual lowest weight values. This algorithm is trivially correct since we proved that our potential function phi guaranteed positive weights and did not alter the actual shortest paths themselves. And we already proved the correctness of Dijkstra's and Bellman Ford's algorithms. Since we are just applying Bellman Ford once and then applying Dijkstra's n times, we have that the complexity is the same as that which we describe for the iterative Dijkstra approach, O of mn plus n squared log n. As we can see, when the graph is sparse, the complexity is effectively dominated by the n squared log n term, meaning that this approach is more efficient than floyd warshall when there are fewer edges. Altogether, we learned how to use floyd warshall and Johnson's algorithm to compute all pairs shortest paths. In general, floyd warshall is more practical when the graph is dense, while Johnson's algorithm works better for sparse graphs. In the next video, we will be moving away from pure graph algorithms to focus on a graph variant known as flow networks and discuss the max flow min cut problem. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time.